just before we get started on our recap of last week's work, I think I should make it clear um, exactly what we're making. Um, sadly, we don't have any examples, obviously, to show you in person, but this is, uh, I've got some examples on screen here. So it's a bud vase. So bud vase holds like a single flower, which you can see on the, just on the right hand side of this slide here. But our bud vase is going to involve using a test tube to hold the single flower. And that's going to sit in a shelf, um, like so. And that shelf has two back pieces to it. So all our ideas will be based on this here. Now we're not going to get onto our ideas this week here, but I thought it was worthwhile just showing you kind of what we'll be making. So when you think about what your specification includes, which we'll get into later on, you can think about kind of appropriate size of things that uh, this would hold alongside the buds valve. So the concepts on the left there, I think it's holding a tea light there. I think some of the concepts in the middle here are holding a keys. So I just wanted to add that in just before we get started in this lesson here. Um, but don't start doing concepts. Concepts are going to be next week. We'll get onto that there. I know some of you really enjoy coming up with ideas, but we'll just hold off on that right now. Hi there. So let's recap on where we got to um, have got to so far with this project. We've done our research on a Memphis group design movement, and hopefully you're happy with it. What success criteria you met there. Remember, you can always go back and put some more work in, maybe add some more images to the poster. Images really are key at this stage here because it gives you a really good understanding of what the Memphis uh, group design movement um, products look like. So if you don't fancy going back to edit your poster, you can always just copy some more images onto that page there on OneNote so you've got a better idea of what they look like. And that will make it easier as you come to develop your own sketches. Um, which is probably going to be next week. So that's what we got to. We had our success criteria there, and hopefully you were happy with what you got to there as well. Remember, any questions or you want any more feedback, do let me know, and I can explain to you um, maybe why you are at a certain level there, how you can improve to get to the next level there as well. So this is what we're going to be working on this week here. We're looking at design brief, analysis, research, and specification. So we'll I do be working on a sheet of A3, and if you have A3 paper at home, that's great. If not, don't worry. What I'd recommend is we do our design brief and analysis on one sheet of A4 paper, and then do our research and specification on another sheet of A4 paper. And we can just take a picture of those two sheets of paper at the end of the task and upload them to OneNote. The design brief is found on slide four, and you just need to copy it out word for word. And I'll go on to explain what the analysis is about on the next slide. So from our design brief, the next thing we're going to move on to is carrying out analysis. We're going to use various design factors to analyze the design brief. So we're looking at function, ergonomics, material, aesthetics, environment, and user. And you can see an example one here. It's done with using coloring pencils, but plain pencil or pen is absolutely fine. You can also look at the example on the previous slide as well. So the set of analysis, our, our, our mind map, is our bud vase and coming off that we've got function so what's it got to hold look at the design brief what does it specify it's got to hold and um, so is that the test tube for the flower is it also what uh it's also one other item what could those items be you can put lots of options in there aesthetics what should they relate to now so we just carried out a lot of research so that should that research should help guide you on what the aesthetic should look like so think about the colors the shapes that you've learned about carrying out that research. Environment, where is it going to go? Remember, this is a product that you're going to manufacture and get to take home. So where could it go in your house? What are the considerations for each of those rooms? In a bathroom, for example, it would be damp. Um, is it going in a room with a certain colour theme that maybe you want to try to incorporate some of the colours in as well? Ergonomics, that's about the kind of human, human interaction with the product there. So that will depend a little bit on the function. So what other product it might hold there? How is it to replace the flower? How is it to hang up? How is it to put your keys on, for example? We've got materials, so it's got to use pine and acrylic, but um, it's also going to use a, a glass test tube. So you can think about they need to be specified on there as well, or need to be put on there as well. But you could also think about what other materials you may be used in the workshop, or maybe you have experience of working elsewhere, and you can pull that in as part of the design for materials you've learned about that in Memphis design style uh, design movement used and then user so you don't have to specify the user moment we're not specifying here and um, but who are the potential users okay 
Um, what sex are they? What age could they be? Think about whatever, lots of different factors in that there that you can think about. Next up, we've got research. So we need to research the items that the bud vase is going to hold. So the test tube, I want to put information on that there in the uh, content library of OneNote. And I'll also put a picture up on the Teams chat for this task. And we see how we've got sketching that out to scale. So, for example, that means if you want to draw the test tube here, which is specified at 25 by 150 millimeters, if you're drawing that scale, you shall draw it. If it was a one to one scale, it would, when you draw it, it'd be 25 wide and 150 long. Or if it was a one to two scale there, it would be 12 and a half wide and 75 long there. So it depends what scale you draw at. And so you've got a test tube and one other item there that you're choosing that um, the bud vase is going to hold. So it could be keys, it could be headphones, maybe it's the AirPods case, something, whatever you want the bud vase um, shelf to hold, maybe it's a picture. It's up to you. But we've got two drawings sketched out there. If you've got colour, add colour, that's great. If you've not got colour, don't worry. Pen, pencil preferably. If you don't have a pencil, then pen uh, will be okay too. Our final step for this week is writing our specification. A specification is a list of points your product must have or do or be in order to be successful. We are taking into consideration the research and analysis we've done, and we're going to draft up a specification based on the design factors that our analysis was based around. So there's certain key things. Our function, we're thinking about it must hold the test tube. It must hold one other item. What's the item going to be? So it must hold AirPods, it must hold a picture. You can decide that there. Ergonomics, it must be easy to hang on the wall. Um, it must be easy to clean the bud vats, uh, the, the test tube that the flower's in. Materials, it must hold pine, it must hold, uh, it, must, uh, it must be made of pine, it must be made of acrylic, it must be made of glass, because they're the three um, key materials but it could include all materials. So you could write, it should include um, steel plate if you want some steel in there. Um, so you can think about what other materials you might want to incorporate into that there. And maybe you've learned about that the Memphis design movement used, Memphis, Memphis group design movement used. Aesthetics, so we've got our theme there. We all know what that is for this project there. And that's what you did your research on. Environment, you decide that there and user, you can decide that there as well. So you might have got lots of different environments and users listed down under your analysis there. You now need to choose which ones it will be. And every statement should be written. The product must do that. And if it write must, then you have to do that there. If you write should, then it doesn't necessarily have to. So for aesthetics, the product must have a blue element. If you think that's going to be particularly appealing, then it will have to have a blue element. But you could write the product must, uh, product should have a green element and it doesn't necessarily have to have a green element then. You don't necessarily need to get down to that much detail there. There's an example um, on the next slide that you can see um, off a design brief, design specification, sorry, but the more you add to it, sometimes the easier it is to tell if your design is going to be successful. And we will be starting on our concepts come next week. So what we're looking for for success in this here, is we've got one word quite simple and um, specification or we've got a much more detailed specification there at the end so our research and analysis are all going in towards our specification there we want to see information onto the relevant headings both in the analysis there and in the specification and we want the specification particularly to be written in a nice report format. So the product must, the product should, the product will. Okay. And just to recap there, our design brief and analysis should be on one sheet of A4. We take a picture of that, we upload it to OneNote. And our um, research and our specification can be on a second sheet of A4. And then you can take a picture of that and upload it to OneNote. The design brief is written and um, so is the specification. So if you do find those easier, you can type them up straight onto OneNote and I'll leave that for you to decide. There's lots of different ways we can be working at home and I appreciate everyone's got to have different equipment. 
So that's why I kind of feel that if we take a, we're working on paper, taking a picture of that is um, the most kind of straightforward way. If you have access to an iPad or a laptop and you want to type it up instead, that's fine. One thing I should point out is kind of skills we're using in this task here. We're kind of thinking critically and analyze, and we're doing uh, some analysis there. Obviously, analysis of the design brief, thinking about who the kind of product's going to be for there as well. So that's the skills that are incorporated uh, in this this task. Any questions? Remember, you can get me on my email or you can get on the Teams. Other people probably seem to have the same question, so do not be hesitant to post it up on the Teams channel if you're not sure about something.